Hey everyone, it's Gary V here, and uh, uh, I am so thankful that my brother Effie uh, invited me to, to be a part of this. And he gave me some guidelines, you know, but it's basically to share with all of you how God has just been so faithful in the midst of the pandemic. Um, I've also, you know, put down some verses that, passages that have really spoken to me during this time of the pandemic. Um, you know, one thing that I am thankful for is how God has been proving himself faithful. And I will never forget that one story um, found in Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25, where he calms the storm. And there are many incidents, there are many things in this particular passage that remind me of um, what it's like, what it has been like to live throughout the pandemic. Um, one of the questions that was sent to me was, um, how has the pandemic affected you personally? Um, you know, it, it, it really became a challenge for me because in, in, in all honesty, my schedule, I'm not an outgoer. I mean, I, I don't go out with friends and I'm just basically a homebody. So being locked down at home was really nothing new for me. But what got me was, okay, but what about when I'm called to go out? How do I fulfill um, you know, being in front of an audience and not having them there anymore. Well, it's amazing how when God orchestrates certain things, uh, at times it's just so different. Most of the time, it's just so different from what we are used to, from what we have become accustomed to, you know. In other words, we've become so used to having it our way. And when things go great, it's so easy to praise God for it. But in my case, you know, it was like one after the other. I was on the high risk level because of my condition, being a diabetic, uh, the challenges that I went through with my heart, um, hypertension, I, I have medication for that. And um, I came home, <laughs> on the, I was mountain biking uh, up in the hills of San Mateo, and I came home and that's when they slapped the lockdown and then about a couple of weeks later, it wasn't just a lockdown. It was a shutdown of ABS-CBN. All of you know of my association with ABS-CBN. And I am thankful that um, the, the, the shutdown okay, has really worked in my life as I know it has also worked in the lives of many others from ABS-CBN. But that's really where, you know, that's really where my work is. I was a part of ASAP, which is the Sunday show. I was a part of uh, Tawag ng Tanghalan, uh, which is a part of Showtime, which is a daily lunchtime show. And that's where I would judge singers. Uh, it was a singing contest. And then there were plans to come up with some of the old shows that I once uh, hosted and judged and, and became a mentor in. But... So you can see, you know, that uh, when it comes to finances, a lot of it, you know, uh, was because of my association with ABS-CBN. But God has His ways. Eh? And they're very different from mine. They often go against my grain. But when I allow Him to go against my grain, you know, it's like sandpaper. You know, as it as you rub it on, on wood, you don't just sand paper a you don't just sand a piece of wood going on the grain you have to go against it so that it's smooth well that's what i've had to go through and that story of uh, jesus calming the storm i think has really spoken to me even as i've given my testimony uh with other groups because if there's one thing that that gets me it's how it starts one day jesus said to his disciples Let's go to the other side of the lake. He didn't single out his among his disciples who was going to go with him. He, he just generalized it and said, let's go. Let's all go. And so, you know the story. You know, he, the water became bad. Uh, the boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up. 
he was actually napping. We, we know that the Lord never really sleeps. You know, even when we are asleep, he's there with us, even guiding us as we dream at night, visiting us at times. But they were, they woke him up shouting, saying, Master, Master, we are going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waters. That's the first thing he did. His concern was what was surrounding, what was, in, what was creating the fear in the lives of the disciples. He spoke to the danger first, and um, suddenly the storm stopped and was all calm. Then he asked them, where is your faith? And the disciples were terrified and amazed. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, they were terrified and amazed and said, who is this man? And these were the disciples who had already witnessed what Jesus had done. They already took that first step. This pandemic has made me realize that it's something that the world has never really encountered before. Maybe it has, but not to this extent, not to the, to the depth at which it has hit and, and affected the lives of many. Then it has taken lives of some who have become very dear to us. And even as a Christian, you know, it, it, it became very faith-stretching for me because the first questions I came up with were, what now? Okay, what's next? What is tomorrow going to be like? Failing to realize that he said, let's go to the other side of the lake. I don't know what is in tomorrow. I don't know what's going to, what lies ahead for me. But in my, in my, my form of transportation, uh, my spiritual boat, the Lord is already with me and he is not asleep. He's maybe chilling, you know, he's there with me. But it was like he was telling me, don't fear, Gary, I have your back. And you know what happened? Um, we got calls and inquiries when everything was shut down, I became the brand ambassador for Film Life, uh, AIA Film Life. I became like a brand ambassador for Doña Maria's brown rice. In the midst of all of these things, I didn't have work. I was doing all my projects from home. And he was providing. How? Well, it was certainly in a way that only he could. It's... Um, it's amazing when, when the Lord says, let's go. Because for me, even if the boat did capsize, he himself said, let's cross to the other side of the lake. I don't think anyone would have been lost had that boat capsized. The Lord would have provided a way that all of them would still make it to the other side because he said, let's cross to the other side of the lake. What is the Lord telling you now? I... I would strongly encourage, which probably many of you are doing, that um, rereading, going through it again and again, what the Lord has already spoken to you about before. Um, there's one question here that says, what challenges are you facing right now? Well, I, the Lord has blessed me with many, many other ideas that I'm hoping to put out there. It's, it's, um, it's, um, Ideas that hopefully will encourage the many out there, especially the youth. The youth today, whose, yes, whose minds are definitely open and whose hearts are open, but they're open to anything. So I am a challenge. My, my challenge is how do I get God's word out there in a way that is not sugarcoated, but in a way that is that comes from the heart so that when I speak to them, it also lands in their hearts. It may not produce fruit right away, but I've always believed in the principle of planting good seed on good soil because eventually you will produce good fruit. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you. Um, that, that's one of the challenges I'm facing. Of course, with the shutdown of ABS, CBN, there were many. And the stories are endless. They are deep. They are painful. They are life-changing not just for the person going through it, but for the person who hears what the stories of some of these uh, uh, people who have worked in ABS-CBN. It has created a big impact on all our lives. And it's a challenge. It's a challenge because 
there are decisions that are being made that you know may may separate some of us from each other uh, kapamilya is always has always been our statement and really at this point in time of our lives it's one thing that we're really trying to practice not just to the people who work in ABS but if that's what we've learned from ABS CBN all the more we try and inject that mentality of kapamilya or being part of a family to anyone who cares enough to listen to us in my case it's when I speak about the Lord or sing about the Lord that um, that's a challenge for me you know um, I would like and I'm hoping that for whatever it is that for whatever else God has for me um, it's as long as it is part of what I'm destined to accomplish as long as it is aligned with the purpose that God has for me then that's where I'll go that's why I call that Jesus calming the storm more than a miracle for me it speaks about destiny if God said let's go then it doesn't matter how bad the storms may be it doesn't matter how bad the storms may get and mind you he also said in another verse where he warns us about um, the world and what we are meant what we were what we are going to face in the world I have told you these things from John 16 33 I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the world you will have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration but be of good cheer take courage be confident certain undaunted for i have overcome the world i have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you that's the amplified version but how powerful that statement is um these are some of the things I'm learning. That's another question. What have you been learning? I've been learning how to be still and to know that God is God. Because even if we don't move physically, if spiritually we can move, it will still move things. Only in a way that God can. And that's something that I'm learning. Honestly, brothers and sisters, I. there were many questions. There were many what now you know those kinds of questions but he has answered me in fact um, I have been blessed with a wonderful team you know here at home working with the projects that I put out online for people to see the stage that people have become used to seeing me on are the stages that are like the ones on television on ABS CBN or on an Araneta or a Mall of Asia uh, uh, arena kind of stage but really, my stage now is just as big as a five and a half inch screen to bless many and to reach as many as I can. Um, the last question is, how has the Lord ministered to you? His faithfulness has been truly outstanding. I am on the high risk level and yet I can still go out and bike. I go mountain biking about two to three times a week and um, I'm you know, I have the mask on. I have sometimes, I don't have the face shield on, but I have the mask on. But there are times when I encounter people standing right beside me or just, you know, being right beside me. Sometimes I'm biking and people want a picture with me and they hold me and all. And I'm like praying already, you know, saying, Lord, just be with me and protect me. And, you know, it's amazing how he has protected me and he has protected my children. He has protected my wife. He has protected my relatives. Families that are here, families that are abroad. Now, this is not to say that he is not protecting the families that have lost someone to COVID. My heart goes out to all the frontliners who have had to face this COVID pandemic head on. And my heart goes out to those who have had to say goodbye um, to family members and special ones because of COVID. But I'm certain that as each tear has fallen, I, I know that God's tears have fallen too. And He is close to the brokenhearted. A broken and contrite spirit He will not despise. So I wanted to share just a little bit of this with all of you. Um, and to those of CRU, you know, I've been, I've uh, done many, many, I mean, events in the past for CRU when it was under a different name then. But 
um, I'm thankful that I have this chance again to minister to all of you. I've been given like 15 minutes to share this little testimony, and there's so much more that I can share. In fact, I think my wife is going to be giving her testimony too. So at least you get to see from both um, perspectives as a couple living in this house, being here, how the Lord has blessed us in order to bless others as well. Um, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to, to coming out of all of this. But even if, and, and, and I hope that I can end with this um, word, that even if the pandemic should last longer, than expected, um, I can only encourage you and tell you and let you know that no matter what happens with every tomorrow, if God is already there, He's going to still be the same God of yesterday, same God today, and He'll always and forever will be the same. He never changes. And if there's any fear that has been knocking at your door, you know, there's always going to be that fear, you know, and it's easy to entertain that. But we can also allow the fear to trigger the hope and make the hope fuel the faith in Christ Jesus. Um, I'm so thankful um, that I have this time for all of you um, and with all of you. And I'd like to end this particular time with you by giving you a passage that I feel has become so familiar to all of us. But maybe now it's, it's not just a matter of knowing it, but now it's really a matter of practicing it because there are many I know who have suffered from a lot of anxious, anxiety attacks. People who have never had to struggle with you know, that kind of challenge before. And now they're facing it. It's found in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. And this is the version that I'd like to read from. I think it's, this is from the, the Passion Translation. It says, Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you all. And again, thank you for the opportunity. Brother Effie, you know, I miss you. you know, I hope I can see you again. And when I do, I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, please, just this once, can you just... Uh, take out the social distancing so I can give that dear brother of mine a hug. Um, give my best to your wife, to, to Alan. And um, I'm looking forward and I know that with whatever I've shared, um, with whatever messages you've gotten from what I've said, these are messages that you were meant to hear at this point in time. And I'm praying that somehow it will bear fruit as you continue to face this world, this new norm. Some people say it's the new world order. Hmm. But for me, it's just a new norm. Um, I'm praying that this has helped equip you as you face whatever tomorrow may be like. All right. God bless you all. And again, as always, I, I give Jesus and only him all the glory and all the praise from my being able to speak, my being able to bike, my being able to perform, my being able to work here in the music room, my, my being able to breathe, my heart still able to beat, um, and I'm doing okay. So I give him all the glory. God bless you all. I love you, and I'll see you again real soon.